understand what happened. Uh, but uh, the, the real line, you really should talk about the entire wave function of that molecule, of that electronic molecule. So this is, this is a good way, right? The molecular uh, configuration, the electronic configuration, is a good way of saying this. So, so the one that you see, uh, 1B1, corresponds to the so-called X state, right? So the uh, chemical physicists are not very imaginative people. They just call the, the ground, the uh, ground ionic state. Ground ionic state is called, always called the X state. And then the, the first excited ionic state, right, this one, because that one's slightly high in energy, is called the A state. And then the next one up is B, C, D, E, F, and so forth. So the only the, the ground one you call it X, ground ionic state, ground X, and then you la uh, label uh, alphabetically for all the excited ionic state A, B, C, and so forth. Okay, so that's a notation uh, that you got. Now, what happened in uh, in uh, photoelectron spectroscopy? Well, uh, if you take your photon energy, I represent the photon energy. Let's say you have a photon which you generate by uh, helium light. Uh, helium, exciting helium atom, and then letting the helium atom coming back down from this excited state, right? It emit a little photon because you first excite your helium atom by uh, high voltage, if you like. You put helium atom between two plates, and uh, and you basically uh, excite them by a high voltage excitation. So the the helium atom somehow get to the excited state, and then this excited uh, helium atom go back down to the ground state. And in the process, it emits different uh, amount of photons. And one of the type of photons that it emits is 21.2 electron volts. This is called a helium-1 uh, resonant line. Very much like uh, your neon sign, you know, your neon D line that you see uh, in all the neon sign that you see. That's due to excitation as well. So the, all the different color that you see uh, is due to excitation. In this case, uh, it, uh, it's not emitting a color, it's, it, it's emitting in an ultraviolet, so you don't see, it's invisible to, uh, to a human eye because it's not visible light, uh, but it's ultraviolet light. So it's the same concept that you bring it up to the excited state and the excited state decay back down and you emit a photon. So that's called resonant line. And so you take this resonant line and use it to excite your system, uh, in this case water, Right? What would happen? Well, uh, so you have a discrete amount of energy, right? A package of energy, 21.2 GV. And basically what you have is that you, you let the water absorb uh, the entire photon, 21.2 electron volts. Uh, so let's say uh, you are right here, right? Let's say the, the, the lone pair electron uh, right there, uh, it absorbs, this lone pair electron absorbs the entire 21.2 so what does it need to do? It need to first overcome uh, about electron elect eleven <coughs> electron volt because this is so called the binding energy of this electron in this orbital. So you have to first overcome the molecular field uh, elect eleven electron volt to the vacuum level, the zero uh, uh, binding energy corresponds to what we call vacuum level. This is the energy where this is the, the, the energy state where the uh, electron become a free electron. You just overcome this molecular field and then the rest of the energy it has to carry over. So you have 11 volt uh, taken up by the overcoming the molecular field and the rest, right, because it still contain 10 electron volts. So the, the 10 electron volts of these three electrons will have, uh, will be moving with a kinetic energy of 10 electron volts. So the entire, so this kinetic energy plus this, right, corresponds to the entire photon energy, which is 21.2 electron volts. Okay, so this is what the Einstein equation is talking about. So you have a fixed photon, 21.2 electron volts. This is the uh, binding energy, the energy required to overcome the molecular field for that uh, electron, and then the rest of this energy will exhibit as kinetic energy of that electron. After it overcomes the molecular field, it becomes a free electron, and the excess will be carried out as kinetic energy. Okay, so if you 
you do that, you get one p. You can see this p right here. Okay? Uh, and in your overlap back down. That's that's what you see. So so you see the ionization energy um, which correspond uh, to the binding energy. So this is the rack eleven electron mole right here. And uh, and correspondingly if you take twenty one point two minus the eleven electron mole, it corresponds on the upper scale here, it corresponds to kinetic energy, which is this guy here. So that gives you about 10 electron volt for the kinetic energy. Okay? You can see that these two are, are, are connected to each other by the photon energy. Okay? And, and uh, what happened? Okay, so now if you imagine that you are scanning your, your, your photon, Let, let's say your, your, uh, your uh, lone pair electron uh, absorb the entire photon, but, but not just the lone pair electron ab absorb the entire photon. Uh, you could have the other electron absorb the photon as well. So let's say you have three A1 orbital absorb the photon. And what happened? Well, uh, you can imagine this is a fixed ruler. You just slide down the ruler a little bit to here, right? Uh, this orbital and uh, this, this uh, electron take up the entire 21.2 EV energy, right, in here, uh, and, uh, and it will then first overcome uh, this uh, molecular field. It will get excited, so it will go to, uh, it take about 12.7 electron volt to overcome its own molecular field to the vacuum level, uh, the level when it just become free electron, and then the rest of it, uh, about nine volt or so uh, left behind will be uh, will be picked up, up by this electron as free energy, right? So it will have less kinetic energy, right? So so that corresponds to this thing here, this little peak that you see here, this peak here um, that you got. Okay, so that's called the a, a. This is called the x state, the the graph ionic state. The a state corresponds to the excited. Uh, ionic state, and you can see it's higher in binding energy because this orbital lies deeper uh, in the molecular field, uh, and it has lower, correspondingly lower kinetic energy because it needs more energy to overcome this binding energy, uh, and then what whatever left behind is carried out as kinetic energy. Okay, so that's that's the basic idea, and then you can keep going down, right? up to about, let's say, the 1b2 uh, orbital, this uh, 1b2 orbital, uh, and, uh, and then you run out of energy, because by the time you go uh, all of uh, 21.2 EV photon, you don't have enough energy to overcome the molecular field. So for example, you will not have enough energy to overcome the two-way one orbital, because it's deep down, it's more, uh, the binding energy is a lot more uh, than 21.2 electron volt. You don't have enough energy to overcome the 1A1 orbital, which is about uh, 550 uh, electron volt. So, so that uh, UV photon uh, is not sufficient. Okay, so you will not see these guys. You will not see these two. But you will see, probably you will see these three as 